Welcome to this episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Today I want to show you how to write a minimal Linux kernel module from scratch. You can see here I am connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH, but this episode can also be done on the x86 machine. The only important thing is that you have the Linux kernel headers installed on your system. So normally you can find them under lib, modules, and then we need to give it the name of our current kernel and then we have this build folder here. So the Linux kernel headers contains all the header and make files which are needed to build a Linux kernel module. If you want to install them on a Raspberry Pi, you can find the instructions for that in my introduction video. If you're using another distribution on an x86 machine, just search for it on the internet how to install the Linux kernel headers and then you're also ready to go. So you can see here I've created a folder, Linux Drive Tutorials, which is actually a Git repository. And in this I will put all the sources I'm developing for this series of videos. And the first thing we will do is we will create a new folder in here I will call one hello. And in here we will implement our hello world Linux kernel module. So first we must create two files. One file I will name hello.c and it will contain the um, source code for my Linux kernel module. And the second file is a make file in order to build the kernel module. So now let's start implementing the hello.c source file for our kernel module. First thing we need is we have to include two include files. So we have to include linux slash module dot h and we have to include linux slash init dot h because we will need some functions and macros and they are defined in these header functions. You can notice these are kernel headers because of the linux subfolder. So normally kernel header starts with linux slash and then the header file name or even more subdirectories. And now you have to know for a kernel module there are two important events. The first one is when the module is loaded into the kernel and the second one is when the module is removed from the kernel. And for these two events we have to implement callback functions. So let's do so. So I will create a function which I will call my init, but you can name it as you like. And this function has the return value of an integer. And no arguments are passed to it. The return value indicates if the loading of the module was successful or not. So if it was successful, the function must return zero. If an error occurred, you can return a negative error code there. And all we are doing in this function is we are calling the printk function, which looks similar to printf, and we are writing hello, hello, kernel. So the problem is in a kernel module printf, so writing to the standard output does not work because there is no standard output for the Linux kernel. Instead, all we have is the kernel's log, and with printk we are writing text to the kernel's log. And it's important that you terminate the message you want to write with a new line character because otherwise the message won't be shown when the print case executed but later. And this can cause some confusion, so make sure you're terminating everything you're writing to the kernel's log with a new line character. Okay, so we have implemented the function which will be executed when we are loading the module into the kernel. Now we have to implement a function which is executed when we are removing the module from the kernel. This function I will call my exit. It has no arguments and no return value. And all I'm doing here is I'm writing one more line to the kernel's log. So I will write goodbye kernel. And that's the functions. Now we have to tell the module which function we want to use for um, when the module is loaded into the kernel and which functions we want to use when the module is removed from the kernel. This we can do with module init, my init. So here we are telling please use for um, use the function my init when the module is loaded and please use the function my exit when the module is removed from the kernel. Now we are almost done. There is only one important thing missing to make this module compilable. And this is we have to specify the license of this kernel module. We can do so with the macro module license. 
and here is a string we can pass the desired license. So you can see here I'm choosing the GNU general purpose license, but um, if I would write proprietary in there, and I would run a GNU slash Linux operating system which only allows you to load free and open source kernel modules, it would refuse to load this module, but if you're choosing a free and open source license like the GPL, we can load this module on any GNU Linux distribution. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to implement um, a make file. And the first thing I will do is I will add hello.o to the variable object minus m. Object minus m stands for or all object files which are behind this object minus m variable will be built as kernel modules. And the con compilation from hello.c to hello.o is done automatically by the make files of the Linux kernel headers. Then I will create an all or a default target here. And in this default target, I'm calling a make file in the folder lib modules with shell u name r. I'm getting the version number of my currently running kernel again. And build, which is where the kernel headers are located. What I'm doing then is I'm specifying the capital M variable with PWD, which stands for the current path. And this means this make file here should look in my current path for buildable kernel modules. And then I have to specify the target I want to use. And here I want to use the target modules, which will build the kernel modules. Then I will add a second clean target to clean all the compiled and generated files. And all I have to do here is I have to exchange the targets from modules to clean. Cool, so that should be it. Let me try to compile my Hello World Linux kernel module. So we are seeing we are entering this folder here. Now, yeah, compiling worked and linking worked. And as a result, we get a bunch of files, but the important one is this hello.ko. KO stands for kernel module, and this is our loadable Linux kernel module. Now I will open up a second window or spawn a second window here with tmux. And here in this window, I will use the dmessage um, command to show me the kernel slog. And with the minus capital W, I'm, w I'm following the kernel slog for new lines to be printed out here. Okay, and now let's insert our kernel module. Therefore, we're using the insert module or insmod command. And here we have to specify the name of the module we want to load, which is hello.ko. If we're doing so, we're getting two new prints to the kernel slog. The first one is loading out of tree module taints kernel. And this is just a warning message for you that you have loaded a module which was not shipped with the your installed version of the Linux kernel. And this means, hey, please be careful because now what you've loaded is not part of the mainstream kernel and it could possibly damage your system. And the second print here is hello, hello kernel. And that was the print K we've implemented in the myinit function. So in order to remove the module, I will use the remove module or rm mod command. And here I have to give it the name of the module I want to remove, which is hello.ko. And you can see here the my exit function is called and we can see the print to the kernel's log, hello, goodbye kernel. Cool. So that's to implement a minimal Linux kernel module. In my next video, we will add some metadata, we will make the module more readable and improve it a little bit. And I will also show you some more useful commands for handling kernel Linux kernel modules and drivers. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.